Kyrie, good morning. How are you, brother? Good morning, everyone. How yes. y'all doing this morning? It is. Good, uh, good. It's good to see you, man. It's good. To, it's, it's good to have you here. Uh, what? Tell me through. Take me through recruiting. I guess the last six months of your life had to be pretty wild. From finishing up your uh, your your season at UL, um, you really had a great year. A coaching change with the Cajuns as Napier leaves and goes to Florida. The NIL stuff starts to hit in college football. Then you go into the transfer portal, which makes you immediate eligible once once you make that choice. Uh, every school in the country seems like it's coming after you. You end up at LSU. Tell me through the, the, the last couple of weeks and months. What's it been like? Uh, the last couple of months has been crazy. So uh, when I hit the portal, I was like, because I'm going in with no idea. So I'm just going in the portal because I really was scared because of the quarterback situation at UL. So uh-huh. I talked with my family, my friends. Uh, so I decided to hit the portal. Next thing you know, soon. So my name, I posted um, that I was entering the portal like Friday, but my name wasn't all the way in the portal. So I had to wait until Monday. So when my name hit the portal Monday, I just woke up at, like, 6 o'clock to, like, 40 missed calls. So my phone was going crazy. It was going wild. I was like, oh, my God, this can't be serious. What's happening? Right. So when I see that, I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Like, Kentucky, like, Auburn, LSU. Oh everybody's just coming at me at one time. So it's like after I get off the phone one person, I'm on the phone with another person all day. It's like it was draining. So the first 30 minutes, I was ready to get out of the transfer <laughs> portal. Right there. Yeah, yeah, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Yeah, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, this is about to be crazy. So uh, I set up a visit to Auburn. Um, Auburn did a really good job. Uh, Trevine Reed did an awesome uh, job recruiting Louisiana me. Louisiana native. Yeah, Louisiana. He's from Thibodeau, Thibodeau native. Thibodeau, Louisiana, yeah. yeah. Uh, they did a really good job. I met the head coach. Uh, I watched them. Uh, I went to the meetings. I seen everything. Great facility. Um, I actually committed over there, so I was like, "Man, I'm coming here. I'm coming here." I made my mind up. Me and my family like, "Yeah, this is a good situation." Because the way they were talking it was a good situation. So I was like, my family was like, "Well, you still gotta go to LSU." <laughs> and I was like, "Ma, I know, but I want to go to Auburn." So we set up the visit to LSU. We come here, and it was just amazing. Like the facility. The coaching staff is like a family atmosphere. So when I came here, I'm like, when I first got down, I had it on my mind already that I'm going to Auburn. So I was like, man, yeah. I don't care. I'm just here. But then later on, the days go by, we had meetings. We were just talking to all the coaches, like seeing different things that they were saying to me. Um, my family liked what they were saying. Uh, it could be a good situation. Uh, the receiver room is stacked. I'm going to have to fight for my spot. Uh, you know, I got Kayshawn, Brian Thomas, Malik, Jack Batch, everybody. We got a lot of receivers in there, so I'm not just going to come in there and be that guy. Mm-hmm. I got to really work for my spot. So that's something I'm willing to do. I want to be that. I want to take that next step in my in my, uh, in my my career and see what I can do from there. What relationship stood out to you in recruiting from LSU? What, what was one of the relationships that you formed in recruiting that you said, man, it would be cool to play here? Uh, when I met with all the receivers, there was like, uh, cause Coach Carter was be able to, he stayed, so they was telling me how how real Coach Carter is, and I could like really feel his energy. And uh, one one other thing that really made me come here was John. John had a really Jordan big, Arsenal. John Arsenal, yeah, he had wow. a really a really big deal in my uh, recruiting in my recruiting. So, wow, that's cool. Can can you give an idea like from? So a lot of people don't know who Jordan Arsenal is. They, they only know, like, who Cortez Hankton is and Frank Wilson and Brian Kelly. But, like, Arsenault is one of these guys, like, behind the scenes in recruiting that you may not know. He's on social media. No, but he's, he's on not, social media. He's definitely on social media. But he's – you think LSU football recruiting, you don't think Jordan Arsenault. Yeah. You think – you hear just one of the biggest recruits that LSU gets in the offseason saying what was the relationship that stood out, and he mentioned Arsenault's name. Tell Like, what, what are some of the things that he does in recruiting? John does a really good job at what he does. Uh, he's a man of his word. Um, I can call John for anything. He's going to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's always been like that. Uh, John is really good, like a really cool, nice guy. Yeah. Um, Loyal. I hear you're like the one of the top picks on the when y'all play pickup basketball. 
Yeah, you know true. that. That's I know. That's, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm the best. I'm the best in the football. Everything like. <laughs> well, Will Wade told me if you were two inches taller, you'd be a pro. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um, did you think about playing? How close were you to playing basketball out of high school? How how heavily were you recruited? Uh, like I didn't have like LSU and then mm-hmm. like that. I had like you and no Nichols. Yeah, like stuff like that. So like after that, so I'm about to tell you my whole story that mm-hmm. why I stopped playing basketball. Yeah. So, uh, so my freshman and sophomore year, I didn't play football. I was just playing basketball. So my junior year came. So after my this is what like got my head on straight. So mm-hmm. my junior year. Uh, December, we're playing basketball, and then at the end of December, the report cards come out. So oh, when the no. report cards come out, shit, couldn't play no more. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, I just started focusing on football. I got in uh, Jeremiah Gray. Yep. Uh, he saved my life, him and uh, Turk. So um, I started working with those guys instantly. So I worked out with uh, Cam Mula. His name was Turk. We call yep. him Turk. So, I started working out with him every day. He came get me sometimes because we went right up the park. So, like, every day we constantly getting it in, getting it in, uh, nonstop. So, then my junior year comes. I mean, my junior year, I was garbage for football. So, like, I was. Like, when you say garbage, what do you like mean garbage? garbage. Like, like, you couldn't I had catch the like, ball or you yeah, just had bad numbers? Yeah, I couldn't catch the ball. I couldn't catch the ball. So, really? Yeah, I had. I think I had. Did like, you ever play football before that, or was that what your first? Yeah, like like a pee wee or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, my junior year, I did awful. So that's when basketball season came. So I started playing basketball, but then I fell off. So I'm like, man, I gotta do something. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm screwing up. Yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. screwing up. Like yeah. I gotta pick it up. Like I started doing stupid stuff, like not going to school, uh-huh. stuff like that. So I talked to Jeremiah Gray. And he was like, I still believe in you because I was at a basketball game watching my uh, team play. So I walked in the building, got a hood on, mask right. on my face, nobody could see me. So he called me over there. He was like, I still believe in you. And he looked me in my eyes and said that. So when he said that, Light something bulb. just clicked. Yep. Oh, I love that. So right after that, the next day I called Turk. I'm like, man, we got to get it in. It's time to go. So um, after that, it just took off from there. So my senior year, wow. I went for like, 800 yards, 73 catches with, like, 20 touchdowns. I went crazy my senior year. Gosh. Uh, Became a full star and just took off from that. Did you go to LSU? Did you visit LSU in that process? Yeah. I I, uh, I went to, like, two of their camps. Uh Uh-huh. Something like that, yeah. Um, That's an incredible story, bro. You should be proud of that. Uh, Kyron Lacey joining us here, a native of Thibodeau and now playing for LSU football. Uh, What did you learn about Brian Kelly in recruiting? Brian Kelly is is awesome. Mm. Um, you can tell he's from up north. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's cool. Yeah. Guy you could be around every day. Um, what when what what has this off season been like? Have you been working with some of these quarterbacks? Have you been going through the process? What's kind of leading up to spring been like for you? Because you've been you've been on campus for a while. Yes, sir, since January. Yeah, right at the beginning of the season. Huh? Maybe yeah. right at the beginning of the year. Yeah, um, the quarterbacks we throw uh, every now and then. I'm, I've been getting on them a lot more because we don't throw a lot. So when they when I get on them, they think like like they sometimes they come up with an excuse like oh my arm hurt. But I come from a winning team, so I know what it mm-hmm. looks like to win. Because I only lost two college games in my career, yeah. so I know what it's like to win. And sometimes I just get on them because I feel like we need to do a little bit more, a little bit more extra. To do like like they think just the prescribed work is going to be a, enough. Yeah. We need to do extra. Like it should, I shouldn't have to push someone to want to do extra. You got to do it on your own. Uh, Kyron Lacey, I'm falling in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Kyron Lacey joining us here on the Jordy Collada Show, LSU wide receiver, uh, going into his first year. got three years left to play. Uh, you mentioned your time at UL. Um, we love Billy Napier. Uh, I, it just We had a great relationship with him on this show. Um, and, and he would come on, and, and you could hear his the principles, the standards, the things that he was building his program on. Um, what was it like to play for him? Uh, and was uh, was there any? Did you get? Did uh, Florida show you a lot of love? I, I'd imagine that he was probably blowing you up. Yeah, um, Coach Billy Napier did an amazing job. He helped me. He changed my life. He 
he really believed in me in high school when nobody else did because in high school, I was below the standard. Yeah. Um, I didn't really make the cut, but he still believed in me and he helped me. He set up a plan for me. That's why I stayed at Yale yeah, because he set up a plan for me. Him, Coach Leje, Coach Dez, Coach Luke, they actually helped me get where I am today. So that's why I respect those guys. And I always respect those guys because those guys helped me get to where I'm at today. Um, well said, man. That, that had to be a great experience playing at UL over the last couple of seasons because the program has been uh, been, been amazing. Over the last two years at UL, uh, Kyron has appeared in 25 games in two years. He's caught 50 balls, just under 700 yards, and 10 touchdowns uh, in the last two seasons co- uh, playing uh, for the Cajuns. W- what does NIL mean? We, we have a relationship with Gordon. Uh, he supports our show. Uh, he comes on our show and talks NIL. We appreciate his his point of view. I think he has a he has a bad rap. I think that people uh, misunderstand Gordon. I think you see him on the billboard. You see him on commercials. Everybody says, "Wow!" But then he he went through this NIL process, and the first one was Kayshawn. Really, it was Alexis Morris, basketball player. But then you know the one that made the wave was Kayshawn because there was talk of Kayshawn maybe leaving here and going to like Alabama or Texas or Texas. Right. I mean like would have been which would have been just devastating for everybody. And Gordon really stepped up. And was able to 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 make a deal with Kayshawn from an NIL standpoint, which kind of opened up the 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 not not I don't want to say the floodgates to, to Gordon, but really kind of opened up his eyes, it seemed like, to a, a different business model. And you were one of the guys that was featured in the Super Bowl commercials and was one of the guys that he was signing in the transfer portal. What has NIL been like? Because your first two years in college, you couldn't do right. any of this type of business. Now you can. And you're signed with one of the biggest brands in the state in Gordon McKernan's law firm. What has this process been like? It has been amazing. Like, uh, well, Gordon is not even about the money because Gordon is a really awesome guy. Somebody you could be around. Um, Gordon, and he's doing a a fantastic job with what he's done with the NIL. Um, He helped me. He helped a couple of my other friends. Like, just being around Gordon is just amazing. Like, he's so powerful. Yeah. Like, you can learn a lot of new things from him. Uh, Ramsey Bradford, he's yep. cool. Yeah, Ramsey like, Barfield. Yeah, Barfield. Yeah, yeah Barfield. Yeah. yeah, he's cool. Um, it's just family atmosphere. That's the only thing I preach on. And, they, and I really feel that from them. It, you got to, it, it, because the commercials put off that vibe. But what is that vibe like in the locker room? Like, what that that's, that. I, I, that was one of the things of NIL where people were like, I wonder what it's going to be like when Kayshawn's making X and, you know, Brian Thomas is saying, what about me? You know what I mean? Like, what? Right. How, how does that dynamic work? And then you kind of look up and all of y'all have deals. You know, right. everybody's got something, right? Right. In a locker room, uh, you don't really hear too much about it. Everyone is rooting for each other. Everyone is hoping that everyone gets an NIL deal. Mm-hmm. So that's what I hear in a locker room. I haven't heard anyone hating on anything like yeah. that. Um. What do you anticipate your team to be like this year? Uh, I want to win the national championship. I know what it takes. We just got to put in a lot more work. We just yeah. can't just be regular. We just got to put in extra work. Um, because I think the feeling around LSU was when we watched them play in the bowl game, people were like, oh, shit, they, they, they're going to struggle to have players next year. And right. then what Brian Kelly was able to do in the short term of signing 15 recruits, which there are a lot of high-end players in those 15 guys, and then bringing in – the 15 transfers, which you were a part of, um, really kind of restored some confidence back to, to 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 being able to be competitive this year. So somebody from within, you see that too, right? I mean, you right. see that. He, Coach Kelly took advantage of the uh, transfer portal this offseason. Uh, he did a really great job with that. Uh, he got me, Makai, yeah. um, from UL. I wish we would have got Sabo too, but. That's another story for another day. <laughs> but he did a really good job in the uh, recruiting prospect. Um, he took advantage of the transfer portal. Um, tell me about Jacob Flint, the strength coach. Um, oh, because, look, awesome. uh, you, you, you probably, you know, Tommy Moffitt was like, he was like a face of LSU. I mean, he wasn't even a face of football. He was like a face of the school. Um, been here for 20 years, national championships. All the ex-players loved him. That was I had a that was one of the biggest and toughest turnovers for LSU that they've experienced in a long time, and that's a tough position to replace. Now you come in here as a fresh face and don't really know what the past was like. 
What's your first impressions of Flint, and what's it been like to work out with him? He loves to work out. <laughs> so um, he's very – he has a lot of energy. Or I like that. I need that. Uh, he likes to talk. I like to talk to uh, – he really knows what he's doing. So, like, uh, the first week, like, the first month, uh, like, a couple weeks in, uh, I was working out on my by myself. Uh-huh. So he kind of told me, like, cool down. Yeah, chill out, lay, bro. Yeah, like, chill out. <laughs> We're trying to lay the foundation. I'm like, trying to lay the foundation. So I just stopped working, putting in extra work. So uh, he just came up to me and was like, just cool yeah. down. Yeah, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. So um, I see what he was talking about. So now we're starting to get back to it, uh, catching jugs more, being on the field, working on releases and stuff. And I kind of got uh, Malik and Jack with me now. So we've been doing that. We caught like 400-plus balls yesterday. Wow. So we're just going to keep that. We just got to stay consistent. I know Kay's still recovering, Kayshawn Butte, from mm-hmm. his injury last year with the uh, with the Achilles. Where – what can you learn from a player like him? What's the respect on a player like him? We consider I, I really do consider him the best player in the sport right. um, this year. I think he'll be the top wide receiver drafted I believe that uh, too. Next, next, next spring. As somebody who is a peer and shares a room with him, what's your relationship like with him, and, and, and what can you learn from a player like him? Uh, well, when I first got here, Keyshawn put me on this, put me on this wing. Uh, he was like, bro, because after the first workout, he was like, you're a dog. Yeah. So, like, after that, <laughs> right. um, yeah. so we went eat out at Raul's. Got to know him nice. a little bit more. Shout out. Juicy, juicy. Yeah, look at everybody's yeah. head bouncing up over here. <laughs> yeah, well, we went to right. Raul's. Um, we've been playing the game a lot. We've been building that bond. Yeah. Uh, he's somebody you'll want to be around every day. Like, you can learn new things from him, and he can learn new things from me. So it's, it's hand in hand. Like, we can help each other. Are you wearing number two? Yes, sir, I hope oh, so. Wow. <laughs> I mean that Uno yeah, and Deuce, that, that Uno Deuce matchup at wide receiver for LSU. I don't know. Was he, special, put out, he put out a tweet that said that had a little seven on there with Kayshawn, So I don't know if he's trying to break news over there. Put <laughs> <laughs> a little, try a little teaser for the boys. I mean, Kayshawn feels like seven. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You know, but I mean, he one. should be seven. Yeah. He deserves it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he looks good in one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one for wide What do you know? Uh, what do you know about Jaden Daniels, the transfer from Arizona State? Uh, I'm ready to work with him. Uh, uh-huh. I've been texting him. Last week, I uh, actually talked to him. Uh, he came in yesterday. He watched his workout. Uh, pretty nice guy. Cool. Quiet. Yeah. I know he's ready to work, so whenever he's ready, I told him I'm ready. What about your position coach, Cortez Hankton? I think he's known from, a, from being a recruiter, you know, but mm-hmm. I think when you when people get to know him, you realize this cat can coach. Yeah, Coach, coach Hankton coach. Uh, he's actually a cool guy, laid back. He knows what he's talking about. He's about his business. Everything is the standard with him. Like, he's a cool guy. Um, what is it like to play wide receiver at LSU? Do you think, I mean, like, when you're in that room, I mean, I know that they've got the figures on the wall, like Beckham and Landry and J- Jarvis and, I mean, and, and Jamar and, and everybody that's come through there. Um, what's it like to be in that frat? What's it like to be in that fraternity? It's just amazing because last year, I, w- I swear to God, I was passing by on the bridge and I looked at the f- at the stadium and I'm like, Man, I know I could play that. Damn. So I started crying. Come on. As I'm on the bridge and I'm like, I could play that. I know I could play that. So the next thing you know, got the LSU offer. And it's crazy because the grades before, like Jamar, Justin Jefferson, Odell, Jarvis, like I could be the next one. Kick song. Yeah. Like I could be the next one. So that's my approach. Like it still feels crazy because I walk in there and I just see LSU everywhere. Like wow. that is amazing. Like, to see that every day. Like, it really hit me, like, last week that I really go to LSU. So, we're working out, boom. I look on the shirts. Everybody got LSU. So, I'm just looking like I really go to LSU. Like, it's amazing feeling. What a cool story, bro. Mm-hmm. You got cool stories, man. Like, I mean, you can feel something's working through you. People, like, you meet, like, in high school that straighten you up when you're feeling like you're down and out and get you back on track. And, I mean... Not everybody just shows up for their senior year and catches 70 balls and 20 touchdowns, bro. You know what I mean? Like, congratulations, driving by LSU and crying, thinking you can play there and now having a chance to play, uh, you know, play opposite Kayshawn Butte in the opener against Florida State. Go get it, bro. Yes, Go sir. get it. Um, all right, so give me, the, give, me, give, me the, give me the starting five on the football team um, in the pickup game. You're the, you're, I've heard unanimously that you're the number one pick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after you, who's going off the board? Hmm. 
I really don't know. I really don't know. Oh, gosh. I never played I mean, with... Uh, okay, yeah. so y'all haven't played yeah. yet. Okay, this is all rep- reputation? Yeah, like, yeah. Wow. BJ O'Jolari told me that you were a player. Yeah, I'm a player. I'm a player. <laughs> I'm a player, I'm a player. I, love it, bro. I love you, man. This is great. Uh, Kyron, man, this is this is cool. I'm glad. Look, open invite. Uh, we are a part of the Gordon McKernan family together uh, as he supports our show, and I know that he's done a great stuff for you uh, in the NIL space uh, and working with, uh, with Alex and Maggie and everybody over there and uh, and Ramsey is uh, is very easy. So anytime you would like to get over here uh, and use this platform to uh, tell your story, you got great stories. Uh, but uh, you know, through the off season of the development and getting ready for the season, uh, we would love to have you back, man. Yes, sir. I'll come back anytime. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's great to see you, man. Thank you. There's Kyron Lacey from uh, LSU, native of Thibodeau, uh, as he transferred over from UL. Great conversation brought to you uh, by our friends. Uh, over at Edward Jones, Daniel Newman, daniel.newman at edwardjones.com is where you can find him online. Email him over there. If you've got any financial advice, if you're looking financial advice, uh, Daniel Newman is the guy today to take care of that for you. If you're looking for investment strategy, help with your 401k, any help with your finances, get in touch with Daniel Newman, daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. Phone number is easy, 225-261-8262, 225-261-8262. Eighty-two sixty-two is the phone number. When we come back, we'll close it out. Tiger Trivia Tuesday as we get out of here on this Tuesday edition of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. A lot of love for you, Kyron, inside of our chat, man. We got three hundred people watching right now, with a lot of people talking about how they can't watch, uh, can't wait to watch you play. Aaron Adams, great kid. Glad he is representing LSU. Uh, John Smithsonian, uh, John Smithsonian, fascinating to listen to him tell stories. The Baker's great young man. Uh, Cody Boudreaux, good interview with Kyron. So uh, you got the state behind you, bro. Go accomplish everything. Kyron Lacey uh, representing Gordon McKernan this morning in LSU football here on the uh, on the Jordy Collada Show.